Seeing Depth. Now, in a 2D flat image, uh, we still can establish a sense of depth because there are many visual cues that we have for uh, seeing depth. And we'll go through all of these various uh, visual cues in this uh, tutorial. Now, the very simplest uh, visual cue is occlusion, and that's simply the fact that uh, when we have two objects, the object that's closer to us will hide parts of an object that is behind it. So we see that in this painting, the um, boy is in front of the woman, and uh, we know that because his body uh, blocks part of our view uh, of her. Now, it's possible to uh, manipulate and distort occlusion, but it's such a strong uh, visual cue for depth that whenever uh, we have an image that um, distorts it, uh, it can uh, feel strange, uh, somewhat surreal, dreamy. Another strong visual cue for uh, depth and distance is geometric perspective. So uh, this was established during uh, the Renaissance and is very uh, prevalent in paintings of that time. So we see that the uh, characters uh, in the foreground are uh, larger in the visual field than characters uh, farther away, uh, but the proportional size is all established by the rules of geometric perspective. So when we draw these uh, perspective lines back to a vanishing point on the eye level or horizon, then uh, we know that that is the correct uh, sizing uh, according to depth for the uh, persons in the scene. Uh, perspective is also something that can be distorted to create uh, surreal uh, dreamlike images. Uh, this uh, painting uh, has very strongly distorted uh, perspective. The uh, lines, uh, parallel lines of the um, on these buildings uh, converge back to uh, two different um, eye levels for the for the two buildings. Of course, uh, this was an intended effect uh, by the artist. Another uh, visual cue for uh, depth and distance is using known sizes and uh, patterns. So uh, knowing the size of uh, lighthouses in this image, uh, we uh, sense that the camera is uh, far away because uh, we see a tall lighthouse and then next to it uh, we see this monster who uh, then we also get a perception of it being a large monster. Uh, for known patterns, a common one would be uh, tiling patterns, so we realize that the uh, top of the photo is farther away uh, in the background compared to the bottom of the photo is in the foreground. Now, these uh, some visual cues uh, for uh, depth and distance and size are stronger than others, uh, so this um, uh, depth cue of known size is um, sometimes overridden in uh, force perspective. So in this photo, uh, we realize that uh, this is not a tiny girl uh, sitting on uh, this woman's hand. It's actually just that the uh, girl is in the background and the woman is in the foreground and the positioning is just such to make it appear as if uh, sh the little girl is standing on the woman's hand, and yet uh, our brain seeing that uh, can't help but uh, imagine that it really is a tiny girl. Similar distortion uh, is uh, accomplished in an Ames room where uh, the interior of the room has uh, does not have right angles, and so uh, even though we know that this is not a tiny woman and a giant child, uh, it's a strong, all the other visual cues, like the known patterning of the tile floor, uh, make us uh, feel as if 
we have this distortion of uh, size. Of course, this is successfully used in uh, compositing in order to make scale models appear as if they're larger and farther away by using this uh, trick of forced perspective. Another visual cue for uh, depth and distance is uh, lighting and shadows. So uh, this is commonly used in the uh, so-called uh, trompe d'oeil, uh, which is uh, the example of a painting, which by appropriate use of lighting and shadows makes a 2D uh, fresco, say, appear as if it is actually uh, a 3D um, object. Yet another uh, visual cue for depth is atmospheric perspective. So uh, this is mostly effective indicating for indicating large distances. So in this um, landscape, the uh, parts of the field which are closer to us are more saturated and the color desaturates into the distance and acquires more of a bluish tint in the distance. Yet another uh, visual cue is uh, focus. So our eyes uh, just focus, uh, tensing or relaxing the lens depending on um, the distance. And of course, things that are very far away are difficult to focus uh, clearly. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, noticed these uh, various effects and he wrote a uh, perspective with respect to painting is divided into three parts. The first is the diminution in the size. Uh, by this, he's referring to geometric perspective. The second is that which deals with the diminishing in color. With this, he's referring to atmospheric perspective. The third is the diminution of the distinctness of the shapes and boundaries. And this, he's referring to uh, focus and probably also referring to depth of field. So the Depth of field is the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that are simultaneously in focus. And uh, by manipulating uh, depth of field, we can uh, have a sense of something being uh, small and very close to us or large and very far away from us. So this uh, photo is uh, actually a miniature uh, faking of a um, uh, appears as if it's a scale model, but this is actually a photo of a full-size city and by manipulating the uh, blurring and making it appear as if there's a shallow depth of field, uh, we get the sense that it's actually a tiny scale model city uh, photographed uh, very close. A very strong uh, visual cue for uh, depth and distance is a parallax. So parallax is an effect that when uh, we look at a scene from different positions, the locations of uh, objects uh, change depending on their distance from the viewer or the camera. So uh, let's picture this um, scene that <clears throat> we're uh, at the beach looking uh, into the horizon and in the first case, when the camera is in position A, we have uh, from left to right the sun, a cloud, and then a boat on the water. And we can do the ray tracing to see that those are those positions. The boat is closest to us, then the cloud, then the sun. Now, if the camera moves to position B, uh, these locations in the field of view change, and we have the boat, then the cloud, uh, then the sun. This effect of parallax and um, how it uh, position in a field of view changes as the camera uh, changes is very effective in uh, showing distance uh, in an animation. So in this case, we see uh, two consecutive frames. The camera is tracking with the character. And we see that because the cactus uh, shifts a large distance in the field of view it's closer uh, compared to the mountains, which are uh, very far in the distance because they don't shift very far. Uh, same thing here. We have a red object closer to us 
uh, than the blue object. So as the viewer moves from uh, one location to another location, the red object moves furthest uh, in the field of view than the blue object. That indicates that the red object is closer. So this uh, parallax principle is used in uh, multiplane cameras. Uh, let's hear Walt Disney explain that to us. For instance, when our camera moves in closer on this moonlight scene, you'll notice that everything grows larger, including the moon. Now, when you walk along a country road toward the moon, it certainly doesn't grow larger like this, nor does it shrink in size when you walk away from it. The problem was how to take a painting and make it behave like a real piece of scenery under the camera. The trouble was we were photographing a flat two-dimensional background. So we set about making plans and blueprints for a new cartoon camera that would overcome this. The different elements in the scene were separated according to their varying distances from the viewer. This put the moon on a plane farthest away from the camera. With our original picture broken down in this manner, it is possible to control the relative speed with which each individual part of it moves to or away from the camera. But the moon remains absolutely still, and so it will always remain the same, neither growing nor shrinking in size. Of course, our cartoon camera does not shoot sideways, but is placed above and shoots downward toward the drawing. Since this new camera used many planes, we called it the multiplane camera. And here now is our same moonlight scene, the way the multiplane camera sees it. As you can see, we finally got the moon to keep its proper distance. This trick of obtaining a feeling of real depth and dimension in our painted backgrounds was used extensively. So. Now, uh, parallax also works if instead of uh, moving a single camera, uh, we have two cameras uh, looking at a scene. Uh, or uh, even simpler, if uh, we think about our uh, stereoscopic vision, in which we have a left eye and a right eye, which are sending images to the brain. In this case, uh, the red object appears uh, closer to us than the blue object because of its different position in the uh, field of view uh, from the left eye to the right eye. So again, this is, this is parallax um, used to establish a sense of depth. Another effect which appears with uh, stereoscopic vision is occlusion revelation. So uh, when we have two uh, cameras or two eyes looking at a scene, then uh, an object in the scene may have parts which are uh, seen by one eye, but not by the other eye. So in this case, if we have the left eye looking straight on at a cube, it only sees the front and the top, whereas the right eye, which is to the side, um, sees the front, the top, and the right side. So when the brain receives this uh, information of these two different views, it uh, uses that to establish a sense of the position and depth of the object. So in uh, summary, uh, a flat image may appear to have depth from a variety of visual cues for distance. Uh, these uh, visual cues include uh, occlusion, uh, geometric perspective, known sizes, uh, lighting and shadows, uh, focus, atmospheric perspective, parallax, and occlusion revelation. Now, some visual cues are stronger than others, and the stronger ones can override uh, the weaker ones, as we see in uh, forced uh, perspective. And then finally, stereoscopic vision, which is also called stereopsis, uh, uses the different view in the left and right eye to see depth by parallax and by occlusion uh, revelation. There's a lot 
more interesting things to say about stereoscopic vision, and we'll do that in the next tutorial.